in our third session looking at these verses, Philippians 1, 12 to 14, we move now to answer the question a second way, which we asked last time, namely, how is it that Paul's imprisonment works to advance the gospel? So he said, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. So my being stopped dead in my tracks doesn't stop the gospel. In fact, it advances it, paradoxically. The first reason it does is it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard that, and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. So the first thing that is that the gospel is advancing in that people who wouldn't know at all about Christ or uh, what it stands for have now found out this guy is in prison for, for whoever this is, this Christ. Now, here's the second answer to the question. How is it that the imprisonment, what happened to, P to Paul, advances the gospel? Answer, most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So, Father, as we look at this amazing response to Paul's suffering and possible death, namely that it makes people more bold rather than more fearful, grant us to respond that way. Oh, that we too might not respond by running away but by running into Jesus with greater boldness. I ask this in his name. Amen. So you can hear in my prayer the, the problem I see. Why wouldn't it be that most people seeing what it costs to be a Christian, namely, it's going to get you in prison in Rome before a horrific Caesar named Nero and maybe get your head chopped off. Why wouldn't they run the other way and say, no, thank you. If that's the way God treats his favorite servants, I'm out of here. These people had exactly the opposite response. Most of the brothers, went, their confidence went up. They became more bold, less fearful. They spoke with greater courage. What's with that? Why would that happen? I mean, do you remember back when Jesus was arrested? All 11, all 11 of the disciples fled. Peter, the great leader, denied the Lord. That's how you respond when your leaders get thrown in jail. No, no, it's not. Not when the Holy Spirit comes, opens the eyes of the blind, and causes, causes these brothers to see that what this imprisonment by this great apostle means is this. Chapter 3, verse 7. Whatever gain I had in all my benefits and freedoms, I count it as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss. I'm going all the way with this prison and execution thing. I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I might gain Christ. What's the point? The point is that when, when Paul is willing to go to prison, what it says is not that God is weak, but that Christ is supremely valuable. Anything to gain Christ. He is of surpassing worth. That's the message these brothers are getting from this imprisonment. Look, Paul is showing this is real. So what at root gets rid of fear in our lives? Fear of people, fear of persecution, fear of death. What at root gets rid of it? 
Number one, Jesus, believing Jesus is real. Can't play games here. Religious games, they're over. If you go into church <laughs> because it's a social thing or your friends are there, that's just totally not what's going on here. Number two, my sins are forgiven, really forgiven. So that number three, God Almighty is for me and not against me. And he is, God is sovereign over prisons and kings and life and death. And five, glory with him is coming. That's what you have to believe in order to get rid of fear. Jesus is real. Sins are forgiven. God is for me. God is sovereign. Glory is coming. And when they look at the Apostle Paul, I want you to know what happened to me has served to advance the gospel. It has become known throughout the whole Imperial Guard and all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord, by my imprisonment, because in the Lord they were given eyes to see that Paul's willingness to go to jail meant Jesus is real. And if Jesus is real, sins are forgiven. And if sins are forgiven, God is for me. And this God is sovereign, and therefore glory is coming, and I don't need to be afraid of anything.